Hey there, this is Jay. Welcome to my channel. Today I thought I'd go over one of my plans for staying cool during the hotter months of the year. So last year I was out maybe June through mid-July and it was hot. It's, I mean, even if you try to find elevation to stay cool, it's just not everywhere you go, you're going to be able to get high enough to stay cool and the sun is just scorching hot. So if you park your car during the day and you decide to go on a day hike, it just, the sun just gonna cook your car, even if you try to park it in the shade. So I used to run a fan. I plug it into a battery and start it before I start my hike. But at that point it's cool. So the fans kind of blowing air out the window, just kind of uselessly because it's cool out. And pretty much for like three or four hours, it blows and does nothing. So I really wanted something that would actually stay off until it got hot and then kick on. And ideally when it's hot, the sun would be shining as well. So if it's powered from the solar, you really don't lose anything. So I looked around and of course I couldn't find anything that fit my situation. There might be some out there that are made for like, you know, actual event cutouts, but not for, you know, clipping on to a grab handle on a car. So I improvise like I do. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So here's my solution to the automatic heat fan turn on system, super ghetto system. All right, so I have my trusty soldering iron. Uh, I've had this for a long time. This is how I coil up the cable. This is how I always done it. Saw the equipment I'm going to need. Here's my fan. I'm sorry for the noise. It's a big 12 volt fan. It's got a stepless controller here and plug in and there's a big old cable and this goes into a car outlet. So I'll be using this connected straight to the battery. We have some shrink tubes. I don't know if you know what they are. But basically when you apply heat to them, they shrink. They just, and then they can hold any kind of solders or wires together, but they're really useful. And these two are the prime components. They are thermal switches. This one here on the left will flip on at 35 degrees Celsius. And this one's 30 degrees Celsius. I'll put the Fahrenheit measurements below here. But basically what happens is these are normally open. So when you connect these to the fan, nothing will happen. But once the temperature hits that threshold, it'll close the circuit and the fan will turn on. So pretty easy. And this one will be 30 again. And I have a three-way switch. So I can flip from 35 to nothing to 30, depending on how it works out. I'm not sure which would be optimal. So I thought I'd get two in a switch just to switch it up depending on the circumstances. This other switch I have here is just on off. I'm gonna connect it in a different way so I can turn it on at any time so I'm not relying on the thermal switches to turn it on. In case I wanna just vent the air when I'm in a car and it's not even super hot yet. So let's begin. The first thing I'm gonna need to do is actually cut this wire because I'm gonna put all the switches in between. It's quite long so what I'm gonna do is it's gonna go from the window to the hammock area and then come run down. So it's about three feet. What I'm gonna do now is just basically split the cable so I can work on half of it. And <laughs> now everybody watching this is gonna say something because I have not been trained exactly on how to do this. I just kinda do what works and it works. So there you go. And now what we're going to do is work on one half and the other half I'm actually going to work on in a different way as well. But uh, yeah, so we're going to cut this. And again, here's my fancy, super fancy diagram that Tina thought was me drawing a car race of some sort. And that's exactly how I'm going to wire this up and switch it. Not to scale, the cable lengths are all wrong. So off we go. This is always a scary part when you take something and you're about to cut it. Now I do keep this in my car all the time because wire cutter is very important. Here it goes. And that's it. Fan's broken. 
no more warranty. I'll split it out a little bit more to have more room. And I love wire strippers. I used to be able to do this with a knife and it's much easier with wire strippers. And stripped just like that. There we go. Now we have to try to figure out how to close this automatically using these switches and this switch. And use this whoop. And use these shrink tubing to hold it all together. I will also use hot glue gun because that works somewhat. To install the manual switch, I'm gonna actually have to cut off a little more of this because I need some extra wire and I actually have to connect it to a slightly weird way, but here goes to that. It always feels weird cutting it because you can, can't really go longer, but easier to go shorter, right? So the goal here right now is to get each of these connected to one of the thermal switches. So that's the only thing that's gonna get soldered on there. So I'll just do this for now, just hold it in place. Do this for now to hold it in place there. And then these two will connect elsewhere. And then this middle part will actually be connected to this end of the cable here. I always keep a wet paper towel nearby to get the extra solder off. Most of it, good enough. So right now this does not look too good at all. I'm actually gonna use some hot glue gun material and just kinda glue it together. But there's a lot of excess cable on this side, but that's fine. I'm gonna tape this together and I'll probably tape the excess together here. And I'm gonna hot glue gun the solder parts in so none of it short circuits. And then I'll just use some uh, gaffer tape and tape it up and give it a test. Actually, I guess we should test it right now. This did come with a 12 volt wall plug that connects into here. So it's off, flip it on, and the fan is not on. And we'll just flip the switch here. Nice. That works. Cleared off the rubber shields on this. Right now it is set to the low one. So 30 degrees Celsius. Wish I had a lighter, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this soldering gun over it. So, how was your day? Yeah, we didn't do too much. We had Popeyes for chicken. Their spicy chicken sandwich is actually really good. I think it's better than Chick-fil-A. Hate to admit it. So I have the 35 Celsius over the soldering iron. There it goes, it turned on. And because the fan is on, it's gonna blow air over the thermal switch so it should turn it off soon. Okay, so I did screw up. I didn't realize how the switch is formed. I should use a multimeter and tested it. But one is 35 Celsius and two is 30 Celsius. So I'll just go with that. Now we'll plug the, unplug the, oh, there it goes. It turned off on its own. Sweet. Next up is the hot glue gun. This is my niece's actually. Um, my own is in a toolbox and storage. 
And I figure I'd just use it because it's already here. And she uses it, so, and it's got, she already loaded it up with the stick. So we're just gonna glob it all around and uh, just to protect it so it doesn't short circuit as well as so I don't shock myself or something. And I'm gonna glob it up so it doesn't get filled up. I'm just gonna fill as much as I can actually so I don't have any metal exposed on either of the switches or the cables once it starts. I never know when they're ready, but Tina, I think uh, you'll like this color. I'm just basically squirting glue all over, just blocking out any of the electrical components here. It's all rubber, so it should all be insulating. So there should be no conductivity between each other. I actually didn't use the shrink tubing at all. Um, I thought I was gonna have to solder some wire to wire, but I wound up just doing everything at the switch. So um, everything is looks sealed up. Put some more over here. It looks like a whole huge wad of boogers all over the switch, but it should do the trick. It should. So here is the final outcome. This is the fan I'm using. It's a 12 volt fan. And I it used to come with this big clip. I took that off and it has this, and that's enough. I could put some straps and hang it on the window. So it blows out you can tilt it. And what I did was I put the thermal switches in line, maybe about two and a half feet over. So it should clip onto my gear hammock area. And then the rest of the cord goes down and that should plug into my battery. So there are two switches here. I don't have any power for it. The first switch here is just on off. This is to manually turn the fan on and off in case I want to blow hot air out before the sensor kicks off. And the second switch here, <laughs> it looks horrible. I know it's just hot glue gun, but it's all insulated. This switch here is to control the thermal switches. Two is for the 30 Celsius, which is about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And one is for the 35 Celsius. Well, this is off actually right now. But you flip it one more and that's 35 Celsius, which is about 96 degrees. And I can decide which one to use. And there are the two thermal switches. And uh, that's pretty much it. It goes to this, it's a little stepless controller. It's nice having the manual on off switch because you don't know how strong the fan is when you do this, you can kind of guess, but it's better to have it on so you kind of know. And then the cigarette lighter. So far I've tested this, just holding it over my soldering iron. And uh, I think it's gonna work. Um, I haven't measured it to tell how accurate these switches are. Um, but I guess I won't even know until the summer months because it's kind of cold right here right now. Um, and it's actually been snowing all day. So this won't get that much use for venting heat out, but I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it to vent. <laughs> the fan kicked out. But I will get a lot of use out of it to blow moisture or keep the airflow inside the car as I sleep in it when it's cold. So. Next road trip, new gadgets. It's nice when you get to stay at someone's home for a little while with my sisters and where you could kind of get access to more of your tools and you can kind of, you know, make stuff that you kind of wish you had while you were on the road before. So this is it, this is one of them and uh, hopefully it works out. And if you'd like to see a diagram of how this works, I'll show you that super pretty picture I drew and uh, hope it helped, I don't know. I'll provide links of all these things down below, um, except this switch, I don't know. They, the switches come in big batches. I don't know. I have a box full of different type of switches. Probably not many people do that. But the thermal switches, I'll leave a link for. They were hard to find. Usually they, find, they come in like these UFO platters with arms. It's a lot nicer finding cables like this instead because it's easier to work with. And when you tie it all up with some tape, it'll look a lot neater. And that's it. If you like this, please like and subscribe below and I will talk to you later. I'll be on the road in hopefully a week and a half. If everything goes well, we shall see. All right, bye.